certainly they can plan. So the type of reasoning that takes place in uh, LLM is very, very primitive. And the reason you can tell it's primitive is because the amount of computation that is spent per token produced is constant. So if you ask a question and that question has an answer in a given number of token, the amount of computation devoted to computing that answer can be exactly estimated. It's like, you know, it's how, it's the, the size of the prediction network, you know, with its 36 layers or 92 layers or whatever it is, uh, multiplied by the number of tokens. That's it. And so essentially it doesn't matter if the question being asked is, is simple to answer, complicated to answer, impossible to answer because it's undecidable or something. Um, the amount of computation the system will be able to devote to, that, to the answer is constant or is proportional to the number of tokens produced in the answer, right? This is not the way we work. The way we reason is that when we're faced with a complex problem or a complex question, we spend more time trying to solve it and mm -hmm. answer it, right? Because it's more difficult. There's a prediction element. There's an iterative element where you're like uh, adjusting your understanding of a thing by going over, over and over and over. Uh, yeah. There's a hierarchical element, so on. Does this mean that it's a fundamental flaw of LLMs, or yes. does it mean that <laughs> there's more part to that question? <laughs> now you're just behaving like an LLM. <laughs> Immediately answer. No, that that is just the low level world model on top of which we can then build some of these kinds of mechanisms, like you said, persistent long-term memory or uh, reasoning, so on. But we need that world model that comes from language. Is it, maybe it is not so difficult to build this kind of uh, reasoning system on top of a well-constructed world model. Okay, whether it's difficult or not, the near future will will say because yes. a lot of people are working on yes. uh, reasoning and planning abilities for for dialogue systems. Um, I mean, if we're even if we restrict ourselves to language, uh, just having the ability to plan your answer before you answer mm -hmm. uh, in terms that are not necessarily linked with the language you're going to use to produce the answer, right? So the, this idea of this mental model that allows you to plan what you're going to say before you say it. Mm -hmm. um, that is very important. I think there's going to be a lot of systems over the next few years that are going to have this capability. But the blueprint of those systems will be extremely different from autoregressive LLMs. So um, uh, it's the same difference as the difference between what psychology is called system one and system two in humans, right? So system one is the type of tasks that you can accomplish without like deliberately, consciously think about how you do them. You just do them, you've done them enough that you can just do it subconsciously, right? Without thinking about them. If you're an experienced driver, you can drive without really thinking about it and you can talk to someone at the same time or listen to the radio, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you are a very experienced chess player, you can play against a non-experienced chess player without really thinking either. You just recognize the pattern and you play, mm -hmm. right? That's the system 